We are live. Wonderful. Welcome again, once again, darlings, to the Icebreakers, where we talk about different uh, roles within the game industry. And today we have a we have a little treat for you. Uh, we're going to be talking about levels and the design of those things. You know, that's a pretty much a basic of a lot of gaming, so it's going to be pretty uh, fundamental stuff today. I'm Hel, and I'm the chair of IGDA Finland. Some teaching of game design and, and head of operation MetaPlay here with my wonderful co-host Sylvia from Norway. Hi, I'm Sylvia. I work for Nonita, the Norwegian network for video game companies, and yeah, here I am representing Norway. Nice. And from Sweden, we have Marv. Yes, my name is Marv Gomez. I am a level design intern at a new startup called Remwen Games in Boden, and I am representing Sweden. Nice. And from Sweden also, our wonderful producer that you don't see, Viv, behind the camera, so to say, making things run smoothly. Thank you. Much love, Viv. Uh, but you're not here just for our pretty faces. You're here for far prettier faces. We have three stars here today uh, talking from Sweden, Finland and Norway. All the, all the big ones are here. Uh, let's go to Sweden first. And uh, we have Angelika Holling. Holling. Uh, Holling. Please do uh, introduce yourself to our viewers, and uh, yeah. Ah, um, yeah, so my name is Angelika Halling. I um, am a level designer, currently doing um, world design and game design at Ringtail Interactive. What more do I say? It's me. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Thank you. Uh, from Finland, we have Yuri Kuokka, a good friend. Nice to have you here. Well, uh, thanks for having me here. Um, so I'm Yuri, as Hal said. Uh, I'm a senior game designer at Rovio. Um, and uh, in the past, I've also been a, a level designer, um, but always working within the mobile puzzle space. Um, I guess I guess that's about it for now. Covers, covers all sorts of sins. Thank you. Uh, and then last but not least, Norway, we have Christopher Yetmundsen. Please, the floor is yours. Hello, uh, my name is Christopher. I work at a company called Hyper Games. Uh, and lately I've been, uh, I was game director of a game called Snufkin, Melody of Moomin Valley that just came out. Um, uh, and I also have, we're a small company, so I've done a lot of level design uh, on uh, previous games, uh, platformer named Egg. I was, I was the lead game designer and level designer. And also on Mark Red, which is a, a sort of a isometric puzzle game about cooperation. So uh, yeah, I wonderful. Thank, thank you, thank you. Uh, as a Finn, it, it it like I I mentioned before, it it does pain a little bit that Finland didn't manage to make a good movement game, and but you guys did it for us. So thank you, I guess. <laughs> and and it, it it seems to be really 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 good. Um, also, I think we have a nice collection of like very different sized companies, so we see a little bit like what is what what are the differences between these as well. But could we start with what you guys think? How would you describe what is level design in games? What is like oh, oh, like at its core? Sorry, before we start, can I just mention that for those of you watching, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask any of the speakers, mm. please write it in chat. We are here to, uh, to uh, we'll be keeping an eye out and, and asking the, the questions to the speakers. So if you have any questions, please Very write good. it in chat. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry for interrupting. No, no. But yes, uh, what is level design at its core? <laughs> One of my candles just exploded. <laughs> but, uh, that's what we call like uh, elemental storytelling on in levels. So uh, please, who wants to <laughs> tackle this first? Uh, uh, I think uh, Angelica, you look very pondering there. I think you might have something good on your mind. I even muted mine to just not be first, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> no um, one's safe here. Mm -mm, yeah. Uh, dang. It it's what I like with level design or why I chose it. It's so many different things that goes into it. Um, so it's everything between what hooked me is the narrative part of like telling a good story without telling it, um, just having it shown in a way. Um, but without using only the, the narrative parts of it, is also how you pace it or how you uh, make someone puzzle forward with the level design. So for me, going from what I was first interested in was uh, movie 
a TV movie production and I wanted to tell a story and then realized I can't tell, like with the movie, I can't tell the same story all the time with you just replaying the movie. I can make someone experience the story differently with a level because it's more freeform sort of. So that's what got me into that one and what I think is a core part of what level design stands out for. Mm. Okay, yeah. That's an interesting kind of like pathway into it, but logical, logical. Uh, thank you. Uh, who wants to go next? Yuri and Christopher are both kind of looking away from the camera. <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, happy to go next if... Um, please if do. Action. So... Um, for for the mobile puzzle space, the the core is is, and I'm sure it's it's um, uh, it's the same with same with uh, with um, games outside of of mobile puzzle. But uh, the the levels are the primary way in which players uh, experience the game. So uh, level designers are responsible uh, for a um, huge chunk of the the player experience and the player journey throughout. Our games, and um, given that I work in free-to-play, uh, level designers are also very much in, in charge of the game's monetization. So, um, usually, usually our economies are are quite um, quite limited to things that help you advance in the game, and then uh, that includes plus five moves and power ups and that sort of thing. So, uh, the level designers are are uh, there to make sure that the game is fun for everybody, but they're they're also um, in charge of of making sure that the balancing uh, of the game um, brings in brings in some revenue so that we can we can keep making that game and and keep bringing great content to to the players. It's a interesting kind of like very very different different perspective with with the mobile. Thank you. That's uh, that's great. And then uh, Mr. Moomin, Norway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... I when I saw this question, I was immediately I thought that uh, level design at its core, it's like you're creating the space to showcase the strengths of your game. So if your game is about uh, puzzle mechanics, you want to create, you know, you want to show the player like what's interesting about these puzzle, like these mechanics, and what can you do about it. And if you have a narrative game, that's then the core is going to be the narrative experience and. Uh, so it's. I think that's kind of a definition that I would use. That uh, you're just creating the environment for the player to actually learn why your game is is fun and unique. Uh, so it's like very central and core to the whole experience, as uh, has been mentioned by the other by Angelica and you as well. I know that Angelica mentioned this a little bit before, but can I ask you guys how you ended up in level design in the first place? Christopher, if you want to start with that, um, <laughs> I think it's. I mean, I started uh, making games, and then you need levels. Um, and I think that it's often it's the the portal into making games. Like the first things that I made were sort of like that had anything to do with games. Were these little sketches of like platforming levels when I was like way before. I was ever thinking about it as a career just when I was a kid and like playing games. But then as you get older, you try maybe out the map editor for one of your games that you like. And that's like, it's very often like the portal into, uh, you know, starting to think about creating the actual rules and, you know, the design. Yuri, uh, how about you? How did you get into games? Uh, or making, making, Levels or oh, sorry, get level design. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, um, sorry. So so professionally, um, I got into level design uh, at seriously. So uh, I had joined uh, the company in in 2015 as a um, as a player support specialist, and then uh, eventually grew into a player support lead. But um, ultimately, my goal when I first joined the industry in 20, 2013 uh, as as a QA person, like I wanted to to get into game dev and become a designer and uh i uh kind of spoke up internally with um uh to the to the lead designer and lead level designer of the of the game and they um provided a great deal of support in um <clears throat> in uh um uh, kind of allowing me to get familiar with the with the level design tools and playing around with them and and uh uh they 
at the time the company had a level design position uh, open and uh, I applied for it internally and did did the level design tests and, and it went well and that was uh, um, that's how I got my start professionally. Um, but when it comes to like outside of outside of that, um, I'm sure I played with some level design tools that came with uh, games in the past. The only one that I can think of off the top of my head right now that I remember playing around with a lot was uh, was a little Finnish DOS game called Ultimate Tapan Kaiki Three. The uh, ultimate I kill everybody classic, through. Classic. Um, or, or I guess this, since we're on Twitch, it's supposed to be ultimate uh, Minecraft everybody <laughs> three. But anyway, so that's that's how I got into level design. Thank you. And Angelica, how about you? Yeah. Um, so I was studying game design, like the, went from the whole mo movie into games, and then within game design, uh, we tried a, a bunch of different things, and I also tried the 3D art and uh, tried to find what you want to do um, when, when you're a student. And I think level design is what stuck to me for everything else being so abstract uh, within game design or within, uh, so, and level design was the opposite, it was very concrete. I could see the levels, I could understand it. And I think I needed that um, just connection. Like now I understand game design on a whole new level from just working with it and studying it on that. But level design really caught me because it was, easy to see in front of you that that makes sense and uh I, it's kind of cool to see how a little bit different you know from doodling to the 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 kind of like play, playing around with game tools to 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 a sort of film like very very different approaches and i wonder if this is the a very common one I, I used to see is like how you end up in, in game industries is, is through modding and, and for example, Half-Life mods or even Doom, Doom mods where people would make their own maps. Like I, I know at least over five people who, who made their own school or, or their you know neighborhood in, in, in these games. And, and that's kind of like very rudimentary level design. Well, I don't know if it's even level design, it's level copying. And then, but then when they when we started playing on those, we would be like, well, this isn't really good. Can we, and then they would adjust that. And, and I wonder if that's just like the industry growing a little bit that those days are behind. And that's not really the most common way ending up in, in level design anymore because the, the way you three said was was something quite different and 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 like kind of organic organic ways of, of getting into it and and i think that is it's interesting to 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 notice that it's it's changed quite a bit uh and maybe a question is like does that bring a little bit what yuri was mentioning was about like pulling around with the map editor and stuff on kaiki but like the other ones like does that ring a bell at all like did you pull around a lot with 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 game tools or modding at any point uh, I can answer that. I like uh, Angelica. I did uh, I did a course or like a, I went to learn programming, and it was uh, game focused. Um, so that was really the first time that I made games. And if you you're tasked to make a game, you need to do level design. Uh, basically, that's sort of my entry point into making levels. Um, uh, but yeah, I did play around with like the StarCraft map editor when I was uh, young. <laughs> Made some uh, yeah. campaign levels and stuff like that. Um, so remember that was that was a lot of fun. And you know, um, for its time, it was like an excellent excellent tool. I think um, like easy to use. I wish we had a level editor like that when when we made our games. Really. <laughs> It's often like a lot of noodling around in Unity, which is like uh, yeah, very general purpose. Uh, yeah. For sure, for sure. Well, you, you don't like we're about to say something, but yeah, I don't, I'm sure. <laughs> I will just continue with another question here for you. Now that you yeah. all uh, have worked professionally as a level designer, how would you describe a typical day as a level designer, if it even exists, that, that sort of thing? Can you actually have a typical day? But if so, how would it look like? Uh, anyone free picking? Um, well, it's been it's been quite a while since I since I worked as a level designer. Um, <clears throat> I, I guess it it kind of depends on um, on how well. Obviously, like again, my my perspective is from mobile, and and a lot of it 
is uh, is um, very very data driven and like people have different areas like focus areas in their in their work. So um, I I worked as a, a staff level level designer. So um, I was just primarily like pumping out content. So like making level after level after level and and uh, and um, we had. Um, uh, and, I, and I'm making it sound like a treadmill, which it, which really wasn't kind of yes, but kind of no. <laughs> but it's uh, you're 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 um, you have a certain amount of content that you want to ship with with every update because in mobile you do um, uh, you you update quite frequently, um, and uh, and uh, it's just uh, sitting down. Um, Firing up the editor and like just just uh, working on levels. Then there's of course like the data side of things where uh, you look at how how the levels are performing. Are um, are people getting stuck somewhere? Are there are there issues? Um, and um, and and then like tweaking those. Um, in the case of uh, in the case of like my work at Rovio. Like we've we've had like really really great tools uh, for for that. So so if there's an issue, um, if there's an issue with a live level, because there's always going to be issues or bugs or something like where we've um, we're able to just deploy deploy a fresh batch of of, of levels with or, or like level fixes out at any point in time. Um, I think I think if we had uh, some. The designers here from our company who currently work in level design, like it's it's only gotten more and more uh, sort of uh, data driven and keeping an eye on the on the player experience on like on 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 that side of things. Um, so uh, yeah, and the, and the further you get into a level design career in mobile, like the more the more it's going to be uh, looking at looking at data and and reacting to it and. Uh, Possibly working with uh, ex external level designers, so like uh, sort of leading level design in a way. But there are some there are some people at our company who've who've uh, also uh, who are just excellent at level creation, and uh, their that's that's their focus area, and that's great because we need those people too. So uh, I will put a full stop at the end of this run on sentence here. <laughs> Uh, it's a very interesting perspective to for you to come from mobile uh, because I, as a level design intern, really feel like the most important gift you can get as a level designer is to have a box you work in. And mobile is such a limited platform. It's not like, oh, full-blown Unreal Engine, big open 3D spaces. You have a limited space that you need to look as appealing as ever. So it is very interesting that you're for to get your perspective on that. Uh, but uh, maybe, uh, Angelica, you have... Uh, another perspective of how a typical day might look like. Uh, yeah, so I forgot to mention that in my presentation, but I did work on a King uh, Senior Level Designer before. So I definitely rec like recognize all of what you mentioned there. Um, I've gone then from mobile to working on a, well, from that box to another big 3D space box. Um, and it, it it is very changing or like how when my day to day has gone them from that like creating levels iterating on them tweaking them looking at the data and uh, in a faster pace to a almost painfully slow pace uh, where it's a lot of planning me not having my tool uh, but then starting with paper basic and it's also why I then went into mobile and then changed from it because what I have done during my five different years of studying game design was this like you usually prepare yourself of how you'd make a game from scratch and the 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 prototypes the paper uh, version of it all and then how you iterate it how you implement it you talk with different crafts but what i started working with was the king um candy crush soda level design was a light game the set the, everything was already there and it was more about how we keep having good quality how we keep players how we and then and all of that uh, so I wanted to go back into doing what I'm doing now, um, which is from scratch, b building all of that. And it, it is a different type of pace. Uh, it is a different type of reward. And it's a lot more communication with other crafts right now because it's on like building from scratch. Um, so it's no day is like the other, which it is um, more of in a live game, I'd say. 
I just has to ask. Uh, I have to ask a follow up question to that. Actually, now you said you, now you've gone to the stage of working much more on by on scratch, making a level. Do mm. you ever encounter the blank canvas problem of not knowing even where to start if it's such a broad thing you have to work on, big project? Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely and how did that. that. In that case, um, so this, this so we just started uh, like the, the announcing the project, so I'm not sure how much of that oh, I can yeah. go into <laughs> details with. But basically, my first day was like, oh yeah, you're our um, level uh, world design designer, basically. Like yeah, me. Um, I did Candy Crush before. You know that, right? It's a whole different type of thing. Um, so th I had a, a, that blank space and like, okay, I'm supposed to do this part. And then just pulling the threads, talking with people, what are they expecting? Um, how much of this do I get to fill out on my own? Um, and then a lot of brainstorm with other designers and other um, taking in perspective, basically. And then the shape filled itself, um, trying to then do the, the typical iterate us. I gave them five different plans of like, it could look like this, could look like this. What are, what are they after? Because they weren't sure themselves. So constantly talking with people as well and then being giving feedback and then that space gets filled in by itself. What are others expecting? Did this work? Nope, not like that at all. Okay, good. Then I know not to go into that direction and go to the opposite. So just spitting out a lot and then going with what I get back, basically. Oh, interesting. Uh... Well, Christopher, do you have any insights in a typical day of a level designer from your perspective? Um, well, I would say that the typical day changes from game to game. Um, a lot of uh, the work that we've done on Snufkin was uh, you do a lot of like planning, like paper or in um, yeah, in a designer program. Uh, and then uh, you start implementing an engine, and when you do that, then your days start to look the same. I feel you're like noodling around. Uh, I have to say, I didn't do that much implementation on Snufkin myself. Um, uh, but um, yeah, there's a lot of noodling around in engine and setting up connections between actors and yeah. Um, and then balancing it. I mean, it depends on where in the project you are as well. Yeah. <laughs> it, the way you describe it makes it sound so cozy, like you have a cup of tea and just noodling around a little bit every day and it's real nice, which is not, not a bad thing, not a bad thing. Uh, I, I think it's, it's interesting to see kind of difference between a narrative game and, a, and like mobile games, which aren't usually narrative games. Uh, at least like in this case, it's more like sort of this, this fast paced things and where it's very data driven. And then in, in, in narrative, uh, I think some of the bigger studios do use a lot of uh, player behavior when they're testing the games. Uh, and, 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 but like smaller studios have, you know, less resources, so less kind of that. But I think it would be kind of just a quick follow up. Like, how much, like, did you, how much testing did you have and, and for the level design for, for Snufkin, for example? And how much did it change, uh, from, from feedback slash testing? Well, uh, the first half an hour maybe of the game was tested a lot. And it was usually the part that we did bring when we were showcasing it somewhere. Uh, we did have the game at uh, Tokyo Game Show like two years in a row, and we learned like tons every time we were there. Um, we did do testing on the entire game itself uh, as well. Uh, and there were definitely many things that changed during that, but we did not have like the type of extensive testing that they do uh, in large studios. Where you have yeah. sort of like eye tracking and all that stuff. So, oh, I but I think, yeah, I do think that uh, in a way it works pretty well for our game that it is like a little bit, it feels like kind of handcrafted and uh, <laughs> like it fits the, the style of the game a lot that uh, you can see sort of the fingerprints all over it. Fair, fair, fair. So it looks for like a very cozy game. Gave me a little PTSD when, what is it called in English? Murga, like the big scary thing. The Grog game. Grog, yes. God, I did, my heart did speed a little harder when I was saw that chase scene. Anyway, <laughs> enough about my PTSD. Uh, quick little uh, kind of donkey bridge from this, like talking about data like uh, and, and, and these different discipline, disciplines. So 
what are the kind of roles you can move to uh to from from level design and where where can you move from to level design like you know into and out of level design like is there a very common sort of route you guys have seen or know or experienced uh maybe yuri can start because you moved away from uh level design to game design um yeah so uh a lot of level design is um because it's it's um uh you end up doing some some uh sort of core game design inevitably if you're working in level design as well and i forgot to kind of mention that as a part of the day-to-day because um uh level designers are the people who work with the game mechanics that you inter that the player interacts with in the game so so um that uh the creation of those um and how those little elements synergize with other uh the other uh elements in the game um like that's that all kind of falls also under under the umbrella of of game design and I guess uh, what it makes sense for a level designer to do that because they're the people who are who are primarily going to be working with with those. Um, but uh, but uh, in creating those, like it requires all the skills of a game designer. Like you you need to be able to um, understand how things how the game works and how it interacts with other things, and you need to be able to uh, document that as a as a feature and and uh communicate it in a way uh that that uh other people will will understand and you'll you're going to need to talk to talk with um uh with devs and artists and others uh and, and like qa for instance to 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 make it happen so um for me uh like i kind of um i i sort of communicated to the lead designer on the project that i was on at rovio um that uh i was interested in game design and i wanted to do um uh something outside of the scope or i guess at the, well the, the the scope of level design in that context um uh which turned out to be an achievement system and it was it was kind of stretching the definition of my role uh, a little bit there um but um but that's that was kind of the first big feature that i that i worked on uh in um in a bit of a dual level design game design role um and then uh once that project concluded uh there was an opening inside the company to work on on sugar blast which um uh had no no game designer on it since it was created as kind of a a, a child project of another project so can um and um and uh it was um since I had already expressed interest and in shown skills in game design, then that's how that's how I ended up working on that. Um, but I guess like before, like from getting into into level design from other crafts, like um, uh, like I said, I had uh, uh, demonstrated uh, interest and in, in skill in that area to to others. Um, I happened to be in player support. Um, I think a lot of people uh, start out in QA as I did, and then um, uh, like kind of follow that follow that path through uh, to um, to uh, to other areas of um, of game development, uh, kind of uh, according to their their interests and and skills, like. Um, you can you can do a lot of um there there's there's a lot of resources online that i was able to use to to kind of uh get into design um uh like without without in, like formal training into it like uh like uh the extra credits channel and like gdc talks and that sort of thing so um yeah so that's <laughs> That, yeah, that would be it. <laughs> I'll stop here. It's a very thorough answer, really. And GDC, definitely, if you're interested in game, they're like worth checking out. It's a treasure to throw. throw honestly, very good stuff. Um, Angelica, do you wanna you wanna throw your two cents? Yeah, I think basically depending on your skill set or what your interest is. Um, I've seen like when I started to 
basically do game development, it was game design. And from there, I fell in love with and branched off on level design. But I'm still a game designer by my education and by heart as well. Like, what if I want to switch from level design, I can, oh, which way I'm now on. It's game design. Um, from there, I developed up, up into world design. I've seen people who, like you mentioned, from QA to uh, game design, level design, and the opposite. It's like, they all kind of fall into the same spectrum. And what you are interested in and or have your skill set to can really develop a lot. Um, if you look at Hazelight, a lot of their level designers do the scripting. They're very technical, heavy, a lot more than me at least, and f could then end up as um, technical designer. So even go from there into the, the tech side of things where I I will not say any roles because I don't know them. Um, but there's if you are interested in it and if you learn or like, yeah, then you can basically go anywhere because there's so much that level design touches upon that you can then go into uh, after that. I know people who have been, um, for example, like King, uh, there was one who worked at the uh, front desk who was interested in game design, learned from just being at King and learning from other people, and then ended up as a level designer as well. So going to and from, I'd say there's no end level of where you cannot go or the, yeah, cannot come from because it depends on you. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a very fair point. That's a very point. Like, it depends a lot on you. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, and and Christopher. Um. <clears throat> well, uh, we're quite a small studio. Uh, we only have three designers. We're thirteen people now. Um, both of the other designers they came from uh, from uh, school here in Oslo that uh, teaches game design. Um, so that's how they sort of their entry point. Um, but I think like uh, if you want to get the get level design uh, position, I think just make you have to make levels and and games on your own time. Um, the sort of the portfolio or, or maybe the level design test is probably going to be the most important way for you to secure a job. Um, and as Angelica mentioned, I think from level de level design, you can you can get lots of other positions depending on what you're interested in. Um, uh, like, for example, a game director position um, or just a systems uh, designer or something like that. Uh, at our studio, we wear many hats. So we're all, all the designers are level designers and systems designers and everything, so. <laughs> Small studios, big hats. Ah, very common, very common. Thank you. We actually have a question from the audience based on the answers of both Christopher and Yuri. They both, uh, someone from the audience uh, asked us, uh, or that you mentioned a level design test. What is that like? Um, I've I've had a couple of different Different ones. So one, one when I uh, when I was at Seriously, and one when I applied to do level design at Rovio. Um, uh, so so at Seriously, it was um, it was creating, uh, if I remember correctly, three different levels of three different difficulties um, inside a time limit. I can't remember what the time limit was. If it was like an hour or a couple of hours, but. Um, uh, basically, you get like an overview of what the um, uh, instructions on how to use the tools. Because we all use like uh, at least at least in my experience, we use like um, our studio internal tools, even if it's within Unity. So there's like a brief uh, crash course in how how the tools work, uh, and then you make levels, and then uh, um, the 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 people sort of administering the test will 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 test those and I think there's some uh, discussion on on those after the fact um, and then um, when I applied to Rovio um, at the time I, I actually found out afterwards that that there wasn't a, um, I think it was because it was for a game that was still under development uh, so they. Uh, so I ended up doing a written test, uh, and I managed to actually pull it <laughs> pull it up here from uh, on my uh, on my other screen. Um, so it was it was a lot of essay questions about um, about my my previous work. So in this case, like my 
work it seriously on on best fiends uh sort of um analyzing in written form uh what worked about the game what didn't and showcasing screenshots uh and uh screenshots of 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 levels that um uh that had like different objectives and and describing why they work the way that they work or why you made certain choices and, and that sort of thing so um and I, but i think generally like the um uh, the actual making of levels is pretty common, and I think and I think we do that at the moment. Um, but don't quote me on it. And Christopher, did you? What kind of experiences have you had with the level design test? Uh, I've never really done a level design test myself. Um, we did issue some tests. Uh, if, like we had some students that actually worked on uh, on Snapkin um as part of their bachelor degree uh, but there were a lot of applicants so we sort of had to screen find a way to differentiate and we all we did like interviews with all of them and we were all like they all seem like they would be great so we did the uh, a short test um and we said that like we don't want you guys to spend a lot of time on this um uh, we showed them some work that we had done, and it was more of an ideation thing, not so much a level design thing, but more um, create like three small tasks or puzzles or something that would fit inside of this world. Uh, and we had given them sort of the brief on what the game would be about. It would be like about music, and Snufkin would be the main character. It'd be in Moomin Valley, um, and we got like this. And we had made some small sort of like comic sketches of that sort of sequence. Uh, we showed them like this is how we sort of do ideation at at Hyper. Uh, and we just asked them to give us like short three short examples, and there was sort of like a couple of comics panels basically. And we asked them to use like uh, an hour or two. We didn't feel like we could <laughs> uh, ask them to spend so much time. Um, on it. Um, so I hope they actually didn't spend too much time on it. Um, and from there, we found like three candidates that we thought were the strongest. Um, so that's one way that we sort of did a, a test like that. I think most cases for us, when it comes to hiring someone, it, we would not, we wouldn't hire anyone based on a test like that. Uh, we've never hired anyone at our studio that didn't do contract work for us for some months before. So that's usually how we screen uh, people when we want to hire them. Um, but um, at least like getting a position like that, that can be sort of a test or most likely it's going to be a portfolio thing that we look at your portfolio and we're like, yeah, we want to work with this person. And then, yeah. So my best tip is to just work on your portfolio. <laughs> in in general, your Git, your portfolio, like just have a lot of a lot of good stuff there. That's the best way. And the, you know, your degree won't be it'll it won't hurt, but that's not what you're gonna get in with. It's gonna be your Git or your portfolio, essentially. I, I want to see your itch page. <laughs> not a bad one. Not a bad one. I will. I will. I will keep that in mind. Um, yeah. But <laughs> we have we've gone through like three questions because you guys have such like thorough good answers and it's like I'd I'd want to stay stay with each of these but I think we need to jump to the next one and uh, I think Marv is kind of itching there. Yes, to... I am prepared. So level design is of course a very large role that entails a lot of work and a lot of different work. Sometimes I've heard of people even having to work on multiple well worst case scenario even projects at once but usually you work on i would i would guess multiple different uh, levels areas biomes uh, whatnot uh, at the same time have you ever encountered that and if so how do you structure your work in that case uh, getting through stuff if, if it gets too big if uh, angelica smile there so maybe you have anything to say about that documentation it's just Keep, keep good documentations, keep good track of what your intentions are as well, and the communication with your team overall. Yeah. 
I mean, uh, would you like to explain documentation a bit more? Because I don't know that that's something a lot of students like myself <laughs> were always asking about. How do you do documentation? How what's the best way of doing it? Like, how should you focus uh, uh, around your documentation? What's the most uh, important parts of it? Yeah, um, depends on what you're working with. With at King, uh, our documentation that I was mostly. Uh, handling there was the guidelines of how we make those because there's so many designers so many levels we need it to be um, unique and yet cohesive uh, so it's a lot about do and don'ts best practices things that you learn keep documentation of that and also so that it's easier to onboard new people um, when you mentioned like different biomes or history if you're having an idea of a level uh, especially if you're context switching a lot um, if you have one project or one certain level and you're putting up crumbs of a certain uh, story or something, keep that documentation somewhere of what that story is so that um, when you're switching to the next level, you'll still have those crumbs. You'll still be able to remember those and keep spreading the crumbles, basically, um, making sure what is in this level, what is not in that one, so that when they bleed together, they don't bleed too much. They can still be unique. Uh, the transition should still be clear. It's like Show your intentions. Um, um, in the documentation so that when you also play test it, someone else who looks at it will go, that's not what I see at all. Because you, you as a little designer, you will always experience your own levels in another way. So then you can go, ah, shite, that was not in my documentation um, and handle it. Uh, a lot of structure in documentation, both of intention and best practices are like what you want to do with it. So there's no do your documentation like this. It really depends on what you're after. Okay, okay. Uh, does uh, Yuri maybe want to add on that if you have any thoughts? You're also smiling, so I'm just guessing you want to say something. <laughs> Listen, it's, it's great content, so it makes you smile. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I can only, um, I can only under, uh, underline and circle it, <laughs> like I said about documentation, because, uh, I mean, uh, I at least haven't seen... Um, well, personally, I've only worked on one project at a time, and generally that has been the case at Rovio. But it's like like one project at a time. Um, but there's uh, a lot of mobility between projects, um, so so keeping the documentation up to date is uh, is is super important for for um, for for onboarding people, um, even like within the same same company. Um, that's it. <laughs> Christopher, do you have any thoughts on that as well? Uh, we have to work on our documentation, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope that's true for most developers. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's... I mean, uh, now I'm really feeling the fact that we're a small studio. Like, we used to be so small, we'd never documented anything. It was just like all in our heads. Um, but uh, as you grow larger, you need to sort of uh, communication becomes a larger issue. And you get more overhead, you need to document stuff. Uh, right now, we're, we're using Miro as a sort of a way for us to sort of share thoughts. And it's not like a great documentation tool, but it is a good way to sort of um to have a common place to do design together um but yeah we definitely have to step up our, our game i think uh, fortunately we don't have a lot of um people who drop off for like no one's ever left typer games ever um we've only sort of steadily grown um so i think a lot of the issues with sort of onboarding people and having people jump onto other projects and stuff, it's uh, something that we're yet to really experience that much. Uh, thank you for that insight. That was uh, incredibly beneficial. Uh, I'm just going to grab a question from the chat that uh, I just now uh, saw. And it's one here. My friend here wants to know if you have, if you all have a favorite level from any game, an example that filled your hearts with joy. Uh, if anyone wants to take that one. Difficult question. Uh, <laughs> it's... I, I, would, I would answer Dark Souls, just like Dark Souls, the game. You know, it's like it's one gigantic level. 
it's all intertwined it's um it, there's no cheating like you're never teleported from anywhere to anywhere it's like all one large interconnected thing uh it's sort of like an incredible incredible level that i don't think even promsoft has ever managed to replicate um yeah <laughs> I agree. I agree. It's not Dark Souls, but I have the a, a tattoo of Bloodborne on my arm, so I appreciate that answer quite a lot. <laughs> but anyway, nice. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Angelica, Yuri, any anything come to mind? Do you want to take that one? Uh, <laughs> as soon as as soon as these questions are asked, I immediately forget every single game and level I've ever played. Um, uh, I well, I, maybe maybe I can stretch the definition of the question a little bit and and say that like uh, there's a couple of games that come to mind as like having particularly memorable uh, memorable levels and or or like um, or or level pacing and that sort of thing. So. Um, I'm, I'm sh sure there's some way to play this, but it's um, uh, Rocket, Rocket Knight Adventures on the Mega Drive. Um, I never played it as a kid. I only played it as an adult, but it's, uh, uh, it, is, it is really phenomenal and very clever and charming. Um, and then uh, uh, Shadow of the Colossus on the PS2. Um, I mean, it's, uh, I, I'd, I'd maybe call each, like it's, it's a game with 16 boss fights and each of those boss fights kind of, uh, I'd say counts as a as a level. Um, so um, that that's already <laughs> more levels than was asked in the question. But I I, I got I have to say it because that is a very good game and I never thought about it. But yeah, the, each boss is a level because you have to climb them and you have to find your way. Like it's it's that's a that's a that's a good good answer. That's a very interesting answer. It kind of made me rethink things. Thank you. Angelica? It's the same there. I can only remember like frustrating levels rather um, than the ones that I've enjoyed <laughs> if it's not from nostalgia. Um, I think it's uh, Assassin's Creed. I think it's this Brotherhood one. Just brings me joy in the same like sense of nostalgia, I think. Because the first time I played it, I didn't know English. So I just ran around and uh, stabbed. I had no idea what the goal was, but I enjoyed it anyway. And then replaying it, I could pick apart the level and like understand the context and see the, the breadcrumbs, the story, and experience it in, in so much different way. And it was still also very beautiful. Um, so that one brings me joy in a whole other sense than uh, like how it's analyzed. But yeah, I I will add like. Whatever you think about Ubisoft and, and the Assassin's Creed, like one thing that they do really, really well and really cool is that they do pay a lot of attention into the historical setting. And for example, if you play Assassin's Creed 2 or, or Brotherhood, uh, you it, it's so based in, in reality. If you go to Rome, like you can actually, if you played enough that you can move around in the in the in certain areas because it is almost one to one, and 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 that's kind of really cool that they can make a one to one copy almost. And still make it like a good level, like it, that it's fun to play. So yeah, it's actually, really, really cool answers. All of this, really nice. I I, I just thought of one, um, uh, but because it's, uh, I'll mention it because it's actually relevant to the very very relevant to this topic. So there's a level in Unreal. Uh, so I, I enjoy it on a meta, on a meta level. So on, on Unreal Tournament, there's a level called Facing Worlds, which has a great GDC talk um, about it. Uh, and it can it can teach you a lot about um, uh, level readability and and that sort of thing. And and that was something that I applied in in puzzle level design. Even though it's uh, not we're not working with <laughs> we weren't working with with uh, first person shooters. Uh, but um, yeah, just uh, level readability and and like doing a squint test on on the level um, to to. Um, make sure that the objectives are are clear, uh, even without. Um, uh, well, anyway, just just watch the watch the GDC talk. I think it's on YouTube. Um, it's it's really good. Can you can you say the name again? Was it facing? Facing worlds is the name of the level. 
Judy say, okay, I, I think I will, I know what I'm doing tonight. So, you know, <laughs> uh, thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, so I guess we're the, the, the sort of next question or next, next topic would be uh, a little bit about uh, what tips would you give to someone out there who wants to become a level designer, like eight or aim for that. Uh, and, and might not know where to start. Uh, we can also merge this in with one of the questions that the audience has also asked, which is how should their portfolio look? So if you have any tips for level designers and also maybe potentially how they can structure their portfolio. Good combo, yeah. Mm. I think everyone went like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris, you, Christopher, you're the only one who didn't go like this and feels like you're like, oh, I know this. I got this. So please get it. <laughs> well, Bring it. I, I don't know if there are, I guess it totally depends on where you're applying. If you're applying at uh, our studio, then I would like to play some of your stuff. Um, it's probably not like a large Unity, no Unreal uh, game that you've been making. Like, I would love to play a game that you made on itch, like embedded on the web page, for example. Um, and I think that great ways to showcase just basic level design knowledge is games that are uh, quite simple, like some like puzzle platforming games, stuff like that. Um, that's like we often work uh, with puzzle games uh, at our studio uh, that also have narrative elements to them. Um, so that's probably something that uh, would help me a lot uh, in knowing if you have sort of uh, the right chops. Um, as for improving level design, um, create things and have people play them and sort of try to understand what works, what doesn't work. Uh, are people feeling the way that you want them to feel? Um, yeah, I mean, that's that depends on what you're trying to make, I guess, but uh, have a goal in mind when you're creating things and see like how do you approach that goal i'm i'm really happy you brought two two things up here like first of all uh kind of like have people test it like don't keep them in your drawer like that's not gonna you have to at some point get feedback and you have to get like you know the the no plan survives the contact with the enemy and i guess in this case the enemy is your friends testing your game but like you know it, it'll they they won't see it the same way and the second one like what do you think or what do you want the player to feel like do you want to have excitement is this like a moment of peace is this a lull is this like a or or a, a ex adventure or like investigate what whatever it is yes this is something i do i do mention quite often to students like think of what you want the player to feel at that moment so this is a really really cool one quick question about when you said you want to test it what's your take on if it's if they make levels in games like in other games or or, or stuff like that do you is that uh you know is that okay is that a bad thing or uh, I would think that's that would be interesting for me to experience. I, mean, I guess if it's like a multiplayer shooter, then it's going to be hard for me to evaluate, I think, uh, without getting the whole studio involved in testing it out. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I think that would be a, a good way to showcase like what you can do. Cool. All right. Thank you. Uh, Angelica, do you yeah. want to go? Uh, for the first two, right? So the first one was how you would get into it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, build, uh, basically what they said before as well. Um, having the portfolio is, is great um, and getting your own skill, skill set of it. And you can use a lot of games that ha have uh, level tools. Like you don't really have to be in a project with a game that you made yourself because there's a lot into it. If you just want to do the level design, it might be a hassle to model a character, make animations work, make functions work, script all this and that. There are a lot of like level design um, tools in games as well that you can use, like Portal and stuff that may, where you make your own game, or uh, the Mario level designer. Um, or just, yeah, you, there, there are games out there that you can do this with um, to just get into it. And also analyze levels as well, um, which 
then goes into the portfolio as, as well as like sharing how you what you're gonna do. Um, it also is an important part of level design is critical thinking. Um, actually, of design design overall. So one of the things that I looked for as a senior when I was hiring new people um, was not just a level design test, but looking at like how are you in um, improving a level? How uh, what is your critical thinking around what could be improved, and also what should we not do if we do in this improvement? If with Candy Crush you don't just uh, add boosters everywhere, it's fun and ex it explodes. Okay, what's the consequence of that? If the level is too easy. How do we make it fun but not uh, too hard, stuff like that. Um, people would, um, in their portfolios, also have level analytics of, I think they wanted to do this um, with this level. Uh, if I want to highlight that or improve it more, how would I do it? Um, and just adding those things. And there's a lot of different resources regarding level design that you can use. I j linked the, the mods, I hope. Um, a level design compendium from Trello that has a lot of resources that you could use. So. That's yeah, one thing of how to build up a portfolio, what to keep in it and keep in mind for it. Very good uh, answers and like that travel sounds sounds amazing. Uh, and I think that there was like the, the the fact that like theoretical thinking about like different levels and existing levels is, is a really, really good and easy, easy way to kind of also showcase uh, your, your knowledge. Thank you. Uh, Yuri? Yeah, I actually, um, I can, once again, only like uh, underline and circle uh, everything that Angelica said. And I'm really glad that you mentioned uh, it was Mario Maker. Um, I think Mario Maker 2, even though there's like the um, monetary barrier to entry to having a Switch and, and, and the game itself, but it's uh, they have really amazing tools for, for level creation and uh, sharing levels. And uh, you can um, uh, you can also also get a glimpse into tracking how the level is performing because you can see the the pass rates for the level and like where people have <laughs> have died in the level uh so so um uh, so so um may maybe you'll you'll see that like oh the people are frequently having trouble with this spot or they're having trouble noticing noticing a certain thing like it's it's a it's a fun way to kind of kind of try it out um and then um, again, there's there's a lot of resources online like um, like uh, GDC talks that that really helped me get into it, and uh, uh, and then um, extra credits, for instance, as a as a show was something that helped me out a lot too. Um, um, and and yeah, just be also also uh, as you're playing as you're playing games in general, like try to uh, be. Um, Try to analyze like what makes it work for you. Like what the um, how is the level level paced? Um, uh, a, a good level would would likely get you jump started quite quickly, and then and then uh, amp up the difficulty in in certain points, and like try to uh, get a feel for for how how levels feel when they make you feel good and and uh, also the opposite like uh if if levels aren't doing that why that is good 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 stuff i also like like this throwback with your like what is your normal day data analyst and then like this what is your answer for like getting better data analyst <laughs> like with mario maker beautiful but it makes sense it makes sense perfect sense yeah, we're getting towards the end here now, and I have one last question for you all before we uh, we end things. So, how do you think that the level design scene has evolved in the last few years, and how do you think it'll look in the future? Would you like to start, Christopher? Um, last, I mean, it depends a bit on what you mean by the last few years. Um, Past years? Uh, I think that Spelunky was a major sort of thing that happened with level design. Um, I mean, procedural generation has been like, they've been doing that since 1980. But uh, I feel like it sort of uh, um, showed that it can work well. Uh, and I should have answered maybe Spelunky rather than Dark Souls, because I think that levels that he has taught the game to generate are no take backs, no take backs. <laughs> <laughs> um but yes procedural generation is like a huge thing now you have 
huge AAA games doing it. Um, like the excellent PS5 launch game from Finland. Returnal. Returnal, yeah. Um, also, Hellblader from Sweden. I have to, you know, return this compliment. Yeah. <laughs> also a great game. I'm playing that later tonight. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I think in the future, uh, definitely, I feel like AI tools are going to come and help us. Um, now I'm a sort of a game director role. Don't do that much level design on my, myself. And there are a lot of things with level design that I find quite tedious. <laughs> I have to say, I wouldn't mind having some help from the computer. Um, not to say that I don't think. I think that creating like a uh, an algorithm to generate um, great levels, like that was done in Splunky, that's a lot more work than creating. Like if he had made a game that were just like 16 levels, uh, that would have been way less work than creating that algorithm, I think. Um, so I don't think it's going to be that much. Like it's going to be less time consuming, but it's not going to be like the computer is not going to be able to do all the work. Of course, it's just going to be a tool that helps us. I think that's my my answer. Thank you. I will quickly say, because Felanke mentioned, I don't remember the name of the dev, but he actually wrote a book about it. And it's really, I really do recommend it. It's not a very long book, but it's a very good about like, And he talks about the level design with the residual generation. It is, yeah, really good. Just yeah, wanted to show them. It's Derek Yu. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's part of the boss monster books. Is that what it's called? Something like that. Um, In a while just since I read it. it. Yeah. And how about you, uh, Yuri? Do you um, have any thoughts? Well, if it if it's if it's at all like uh, followed <laughs> followed my own career path, uh, then or if I can use my own career path as a barometer, then it's just um, more and more data analysis <laughs> of, of what's going on in the levels and and using data to in, inform uh, uh, inform you and make better decisions and 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 uh, improve the game experience. Um, and that's if you work in mobile, that's something that uh you can you can expect to be a big part of your work um and then uh, as christopher said like ai is a big thing um that's uh at, at its best something that can help um uh help us in in uh in our work as as level designers so um uh there was uh there was some talk earlier about testing testing levels and and uh like um as a level designer how your level turns like you're going to be testing the level yourself as you're you're playing it but uh it's it's just a barometer of you is not going to be enough you have to give it to other people to test and in the case of mobile games you're going to be giving it to uh the well obviously qa is going to be involved in some way or or, or one, some way shape or form and and the other people in your team are going to be testing the level as well and giving feedback um but ultimately it's the players who are going to be um who are who are going to be Testing out the game, and then you'll be getting data back from how they're how they're doing with those levels, and then and then tweaking them, uh, and and uh, ideally, say AI would be able to help with that, uh, with sort of reliably a reliably human gameplay or <laughs> playing experience, so that you can uh, so that the levels are 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 um, in as good a shape as possible when you first launch them, and not only after some like iteration. <laughs> Thank you. And Angelica, do you have any thoughts? Uh, yeah, I think I'd just uh, underline as well the thing about AI. Um, when we talked about the like, first uh, procedural generated levels and stuff always made me nervous, which is hypocritical considering I started out at Mojang. But uh, going more into what I am working with and uh, what uh, what at King people thought that we were, or when I worked at King, people always thought that our levels were generated I was wasn't people who made all of those levels but they are handmade and like uh, not made by AI but I want to see what AI can do to help us out with that and like all of these procedural generated stuff and things I think that we can uh, use it a lot more as tools and I think it will be beneficial for every, everyone and everything with that so that's what I'm more looking forward to have like you said having all these tedious parts of it all the blank space issue um, having that solved with AI and still having the human touch and being able to do those things. 
uh, through the work that we are doing, but maybe more fun and easier. But I am nervous with how yeah, we the balance between it all. Thank you. Makes sense, yeah. Can I say one more thing? Mm -hmm. Of course. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to having AI that actually acts as players so they can test our levels. That would be nice. <laughs> I'd love to have some AI testers that could give me some <laughs> useful feedback, but I guess that's probably then nothing would stop them from actually making good levels. So. Yeah, but, but I'm wondering, like, will AI, AI ever be as random and as as illogical as humans? Because like people will find the weirdest ways of doing stuff, and and yeah, that's an actually uh, interesting point. Hmm. Um, but <laughs> unfortunately, as as is often case with this this, we have like such good guests and like uh, very very interesting knowledge there, and then we could talk for quite a bit. And I see Sylvia already staring at me, being like, <laughs> "What?" Huh? So uh, <laughs> we are running out of time. We're already a little past eight a, eight o'clock, at least here in the future in Finland, whereas you know Sweden, and Norway, you know, a little bit behind, but that's okay. We don't judge. Uh, but yeah. Thank you for being here. Really, really interesting uh, things you said, and 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 really, really good answers, and and good uh, good. Uh, uh, I think the GDC videos, the Trello, like this, the book. These are, I think, things really I would recommend for most people too. Uh, even if you're not interested in specifically level design, like there, are, it's it's good stuff to look into and and and, and learn about. Uh, would you guys want to? I don't know, plug your socials or, or your game or your company, whatever you want to want to throw out there. Uh, I'm going to let Snuff can start. Yeah, just just play Snuffkin. <laughs> play Snuff everybody should, honestly, everybody should watch Moomin and play Snuffkin. That will make your life better, heaps better. It's on, it's on Steam and Switch, and uh, I quit Twitter, so I don't have any socials to plug. Really? <laughs> me too. Me too. It's been a bit rough there for a while. So I feel you. Yuri, at least on my screen. Yuri. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, well, nothing to plug. Just play Snufkin. <laughs> I think that's a great <laughs> message for all. Uh, great advice yeah. for all. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Thank you. Angelica? <laughs> Well, our game's not out yet, so yeah, play, play Snufkin. Um, look at the Jello <laughs> Companion for uh, that. They, they talked about portfolio stuff there too, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> this will be on, on, on YouTube, and we'll make sure it's link link of these uh resources there. And and as you heard from our esteemed uh, guests here, like play Snufkin. Like, what are you waiting? Wait, where are you walking? <laughs> this? No, play Snufkin. Like, you got better things to do, okay? Uh, go there and try not to be you know broken by by. The Groke, because it is a it is a deeply sad but scary uh, creature, but but yeah, congrats on the on the, on the game and 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 I know I will I will have a go at that. Uh, thank you for being here. You've been wonderful guests. Thank you all the darlings watching there. Thank you Sylvia. Thank you Marv, and thank you Viv, of course, behind the camera for helping us make all of this possible. Uh, we will be back. You know, in a, in a bit with uh, with the next topic, which I'm like trying to buy time to remember what it is, but I don't. Does Marv or Sylvia remember what is the next topic? It's not just me. It's not just me. Okay, thank you. Okay, we will be around, and we're going to talk about uh, another role in the game industry. Uh, we'll talk about Snufkin, I think. We'll talk about if yeah. nothing. Yeah. Else, we'll talk yeah. about Snufkin. Yeah, maybe we'll do like a live stream about Snufkin. We're doing uh, concept, art. concept art is our next topic. Concept artists. There we go. There we go. Uh, we will see you around in, in, in a month or so, uh, or a couple. And uh, thank you. All the best. Have a wonderful evening. And adios. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ooh. Ooh. I'm not looking.